Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Angel Storm. I'm so excited to have you here today. I want to list for you 10 ways that the narcissist will try to ruin your life and also at the end give you the one thing that you need to do to combat all of these things. So let's get started. First of all, probably most obvious, the narcissist is going to try to gaslight you. They are going to try to make you doubt your perceptions, your memory, your sanity, and this causes excessive confusion, self-doubt, unsuredness about which way to move forward, and it can also cause you to not trust people, including your own legal team. This is especially important if you are in court with a narcissist that you do trust your legal team. The second thing that they will do is turn up the manipulative charm. So they're going to present themselves one way, charming, charismatic, successful, whatever it is, and that draws you in before you realize not only who they are, but also their true intentions. And what happens when people fall into this trap is that the, the, the words that they will say to themselves is, I've already invested so much time, right? I've already invested so much time into this relationship. Why don't I just try to make this person become the person that they were trying to present themselves to me in the initial beginning? And that will be the reason that a lot of people continuously try to make things work with the narcissist, whether that's in a, uh, a romantic relationship or a business relationship, it's just not seeing what's actually happening because you feel you've invested too much time into that situation already. The third thing that narcissists will do is try to isolate you. And this is done strategically so that you will not only be completely dependent upon them, for anything and everything that you may need, but also to make sure that you can't seek help. So isolating you from your friends, your family, your support networks, even causing divides at your work, causing rifts between you and your children, anybody that's around you is done intentionally, not just so that you have to depend on the narcissist, but so that they're also the only voice, making it really difficult for you to ever seek outside help, get outside validation, really get an outside perspective. A lot of times, even if you end up in therapy with a narcissist, the narcissist will have been the one to have picked the therapist because they already know that they can control that therapist, which is exactly why I do not recommend that you go to therapy with narcissists. I've mentioned this in other videos before, but I just want to reiterate, unless your professional is completely trained in how to identify cluster B personality disorders and how this comes about in the therapy session, chances are you are going to not only be fighting the narcissist, but also the therapist. Number four is projection. And this is super important to know that this is happening if you are in court, because this needs to go into your strategy. The narcissist will project their own flaws, their own shortcomings, or whatever onto you and blame you for things that they actually have done or have not done. So whenever you see the narcissist accusing you of something that you know is not true, you cannot react to that. If you are in court, especially, you need to not react to that. You need to have a plan, a strategy with your attorneys on how you're going to deal with this legally. You, This is a great a uh, bullet for your legal case to use against the narcissist, but you have to have a plan. Your legal team needs to have that incorporated and you need to know what to do with this information. But just be aware that projection is super common and this goes into gaslighting, right? Instead of saying, you said this, now, now they're accusing you of saying that thing or doing that thing. And it can really cause a lot of confusion. This is really great if you are in court with a narcissist, if you do know how to track all of these things and you have a strategy for how to present this evidence in court, it can really help your case a lot. Number five is emotional manipulation. They will use your emotions, guilt, fear, pity, uh, you know, your past or whatever to get you to give them what they want and to keep you under their influence. They will make it you think that you have no other options or that you know, if they know that you have a certain type of value, you have a certain type of skill set that they play on that so that they use what should be your strengths against you. They will actually use your strengths against you. One of the things that will happen a lot with the clients that I work with is 
um, is the, the thought around divorce, right? God hates divorce, and so you can't divorce me. What would the church think? What would your pastor think? What would Jesus think? All of those things, that's man manipulation on your emotions, on your values. It's, it's an attempt to rewrite truth into something that they want to be truth, not actual truth, not this is what is right or what's wrong. And it completely, by the way, absolves them of any wrongdoing that, that is there on their behalf. And it puts everything back on you. And so you need to be aware of this. Emotional manipulation is number five. Number six is undermining confidence. Narcissists will try to undermine your confidence, your self-esteem through constant criticism, th constant belitter belittling, mockery, Again, the isolation making you feel like nobody really does like me because, look, I haven't seen my family or I haven't seen my friends in X amount of uh, days, weeks, months, years even. So maybe I'm not amazing. Maybe people don't want to hang out with me. And they will use all of these techniques wrapped together. But you should know that this will wear on you. The strongest person, the strongest person on the planet, the most successful person on the planet would have a difficult time keeping keeping their sense of self under these types of conditions. So it is important that you notice when you are being criticized, when you are being belittled, when you are being mocked, and especially when this is happening in front of other people because those other people should be able to stand up and say, that's not okay, that's not right. But that's part of the isolation process that can also be happening if that if nobody is coming to to your aid in those situations. Control and dominance is number seven. This is pretty obvious. The narcissist will try to control, dominate every aspect of your life, including how you think, how you feel, your emotions, your actions, your choices. And this will eventually lead to very little room for independence on your behalf. Number eight is triangulation. They will create drama. They will create conflict by involving a third party, such as spreading rumors or using others to manipulate you and to undermine your relationship. So for example, if somebody in your life is also close to the narcissist and the narcissist has kind of won them over to their narrative, don't be surprised if that person starts calling you, telling you what you need to be doing, even though they have only heard one side of the story at best and they have no idea what you're actually living in, the kind of conditions that you're actually living in. And, and this is how triangulation happens. So not only do you doubt yourself already, the narcissist is telling you one thing, and now this person that you very much trust or admire, look up to, whatever, is calling you, telling you to do the very same thing that the narcissist is doing. Somebody in that situation is clearly going to start doubting whether or not they're doing the right thing and whether or not they need to, you know, ultimately listen to what the narcissist says. Number nine is withholding affection or approval. Narcissists will use affection, validation, approval as a tool of manipulation, and they will withdraw it from you when you don't comply with their demands. So this is especially true if you are in any way, shape, or form involved in public events. This could be as something as simple as your kid's baseball game or whatever. If the narcissist knows that you very much value the way that other people perceive you and perceive your family, perceive your relationship with the narcissist, they will use that. They will use that as a manipulation tactic in order to get you to do what they want you to do. And if you know that they could have the ability to cause a scene, you don't want that to happen, it's easier to just kind of make up, brush it under the rug and move on with the day. And, and we often will say it's for the sake of the children. Oh, we don't want to make a scene at the kid's game. But it's actually because the person involved in that situation really doesn't want that blowback on them. They don't want to actually answer any of the questions. They don't want to have people kind of looking at this facade that they are building with the narcissist, whether they're willingly doing that or not, whether they're consciously doing it or not. They're still participating in the facade that they are building with the narcissist. Okay, and now number 10 is exploitation. Narcissists will use, will exploit other people for their own gain. So they will, will take something that you have that they need in that moment, whether that's financially, whether that's a social status, whether it's something that would help them create a certain type of facade, you have a certain connection or whatever, and they will use you as a scapegoat or take credit for your achievements while downplaying your own contributions 
to that scenario. So you could have made the connection or this could be your company that you built and or this could be your money that was used to invest in such and such a thing. The narcissist is going to take credit for that. The narcissist is going to see that thing that you have that they want as an easy way to essentially rob you of that thing and claim it as their own. Meanwhile, ignoring all of your hard work and all of the effort that you did in order to create the results that ended up coming out of that. So those are the 10 ways that I'm listing for you in this video. The one thing, the one thing that you can do to combat all of these things is to be very sure of who you are without fear. Be very sure of who you are without fear. How do you do that? I want you to see if you're a good fit to join my Narcissistic Detox Intensive where I explain this to you and really teach you and coach you through the ways that you can live completely independent of fear and be completely authentic as well. So if you want to apply, text me the word detox to 512-677-9322 to see if you qualify. And if you're outside of the U.S., shoot me an email. My email address is in the description of this video. See if we are a good fit to work together and to help you really learn how to implement who you are without fear. And I'll see you in the next video.